Okay, here's the horse. Put a square on the ammo, use a round surface of your hammer. Don't do too much. Another square. There's the round surface of the horn. Get the corner off. Check. Back. Plane. Go to the neck. back to plane. Now I'm going to do the check, diagonal, run, swoop, run, swoop. You have to run because that, that one gets longer. Then this one, check, diagonal, swoop, diagonal, swoop, check, diagonal, Check. Diagonal. Swoop. Get rid of the diagonal puppet. I'm going to mark for punching. This punch is ground kind of like a chisel. I want to punch where the true material is. I'm going to look over. Make a little mark. I'm going to look under, make a little mark, I'm going to look at it, and then I'm going to punch straight, then I look at it, put it quite on my ammo, you hear that jiggle, turn my punch around, okay that looks pretty good, so now I'm going to turn my punch around again, and give me a good mark, so I can feel Instead of find when I come out, I'm going to do a little bit heavier on this side. There. So now I'll put it into the fire and I'm going to punch this hole. Okay. So I feel fine. Look after every hit. Turn it over, hit with my round surface, just that area, to get it down. Then I reestablish my mark, turn it around, turn it over, and I place the light mark off a little bit, so I'm straighten it up. Another light mark, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to make a heavy mark. Turn it around every time. Heavy. Now this is the, what, what do they call it, 1020? Not quite the same. Did you hear that? Okay. Go all the way, pull my punch off. You see it hit the anvil. You see the air in there. It doesn't have far enough where it can fall out and so it hits your anvil and get that little thrift I made slot opener and I'm going to just put it right here and uh, tap it out That's going to be hot, but, uh, there's the plug that fell out, and, uh, yeah, this, uh, 1020 acts quite a bit different than, uh, the, uh, A36 for punching and stuff. It does tend to drag more, and, uh, you'll see when you're drifting, too. Uh, it doesn't, it kind of acts like copper and stuff does when you're drifting. It, it, it has some drag to it because it's soft material. But, uh, yeah. Oh. Alright, I'm going to talk about this undersized slot opener. 
you see, if you have an undersized slot opener, what will happen is it pushes the short sides out without stopping on the long axis. If you have one that's the same size like I've seen done, uh, it has, when it touches here, it, it kind of tries to stop and doesn't push out here so much. It, and you'll have to go in one side and the other side. Um, so this allows for it not to touch and it just acts on these. So it's a lot better. Try to get it in the middle. Place it in there. See, see that black shadow that appears, the contact? lift it up off the anvil. Let that come back a little bit, the, the heat even. And then I'll place the round drift in. I'm going to go on down and start the, the drawing out for whatever tool you want to make. So I'll get a heat back here. I'll leave this part alone for right now and I'll just get some distance. Okay, got a little bit hot. Here I'm still going to do it. So I'm just going to get some distance. I'm going to do a 180 turn. And what I'm trying to work for is getting this to make the, the biggest square that this size stock will make. Now I'm going to start to level out. Alright, I'm running out of heat there. So I'm going to go back here and get the square that this will make. But I overheat it there, but anyway. So it's getting too cold, but you can see how I'm working it. At first, when it was rectangular, I just did 180 degrees and then brought the lump onto the anvil, brought it on, brought it on, and then you get to where it's almost square, you know, go ahead and run out to your end of your heat once it pulls over the anvil where you can hold down straight you hold down and this will start to taper up but what i do first is get the middle down getting the middle down will help you to work this side over here or if you want to do more over here also Okay, so I'm going to work from right here and watch as I get up into the, the rectangular, it'll start to taper up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take that bend out so you can see this better. I'm going to slow down. And as I go into this lump, you see. starts to taper up and you're just holding it straight on the anvil. Now when you do get up to here, I do not hit here, I need to be on the anvil. If you hit with your diagonal here, you'll be less likely to do much there if you miss, you know, than you would if you were up on the other. Then I can, you know, come back, taper, planish, you know, to, to your tape. Plan it. You can take the diagonals at lower temperatures. If that's all you're doing, if you're not forging, 
So move it, change this dimension. This is what I mean by forging. So diagonals can and probably should be taken off at lower temps. Okay. You see, I hit that on purpose, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's what you're trying to avoid. That's why if you go to the diagonal, you're less likely to hit here. Not that you, you can still hit it, but you're less likely to hit the diagonal. And it always hits the bottom side. Even if you hit way back here, your bottom diagonal gets hit on the other side. What I'm gonna do now is I'll forge, I'll move back up into here. You know, you could, you know, make this however you want. Uh, I'm not gonna dwell on this. Usually I'd take this round in, into here. I'd get a lot more too, but for uh, time purposes, we're just going to move up into this, and I'll forge the uh, the hole like I do my bottle openers. Uh, a lot of people are doing that style of bottle opener now, but this will be a round over and under bottle opener. And if you notice, when I slit and drifted this one to three profile material, quarter by three quarter, one to three proportion, it gives you a rectangular section right here. It's quarter by whatever that is, uh, five sixteenths or so. So that's rectangular. You don't want to approach the diagonals on a rectangle. It's better to make that more of a square bar in that area before I go to the diagonal. Because most of the forging will be done on the diagonal and I'll be done on the horn. And when I approach these and I'm going to hit with a round surface of my hammer. And I go and change position and make it like a square bar, like I said. Now I'm going to do the diagonal. So I get back over here. And the diagonal helps again. You know, you try not to hit uh, beyond this spot, spot. And if you do hit it, it's not that big of a deal. You see? And I, I'm too cold right now, but I just get one side and then I turn it over and I'll, I'll do the diagonal. But like I said, I'm a little bit cold. But when I get with this, I've done this, this hole where you get to at least an inch circle inside and just the one heat, you know, when you're doing a bunch of them. But it's still steps and stages, just like everything else. You, you just want to, you know, do this before you do that. Very orderly sequence. You don't want to ever paint yourself in the corner or anything. So I'll do something before you. Okay. Get the other diagonal. I'll hit it this way. Go through the diagonal one more time. Okay, now I usually take a, uh, a drift and then uh, I'll punch the hole for a bottle of beer. It, it didn't get that first blow. Oh, I thought it was going to turn it over. And now I'm going to, while it's cooler temperature, I'm going to mark my, uh, what do you call them, uh, the things that, the working part of a bottle opener, how about that? <laughs> and I use a 
squash ball fuller. You don't want a round, round fuller because it can actually pierce through your metal. And I just give myself a mark so I can feel instead of find. I put it back and then I'll forge those two. Yep. So. That could have been a little hard, but I'll go for that one first. Get it off the ammo. Don't hit twice. I've seen a lot of people hit twice. And you, you, you'll notice that on those videos. That stuff bounces right back because it gets real cold, you know. The more you, you, know, you let your, your material get some more heat. And, you know, this one is not as cold as... If, if I go like this, you know, boom, 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 that stuff gets hard. Watch those videos where people are uh, doing some of this or whatever, and, and they hit it three or four times or more. That stuff starts to really bounce around because it's getting real stiff. The contact with your anvil is so important to, to uh, try and get the material off of the anvil. It allows the material to stay hotter and you, know, you can work it a lot longer. Straightening you know, this out. Now I can go up into my horse and do whichever side you want. It doesn't really matter. But I can, you know, while it's cool, I'll use a chisel to lay out my mouth, half chisel face, or what is it called? And then my ear. Okay, and I angle a little bit, look at it, and I'll do a little bit more. So there's my ear. Now I'm going to use my fuller. Now if I chisel the main, I can chisel both sides, mark my ears, everything, all in one heat, and then punch my eye and my nose, all in one heat. But if I'm going to fuller the main, which most people like, it adds a lot more life to it, uh, I'm going to not punch my eyes and nose. But I, I do mark this. There's the ear mark. And I'll lay these out. The, full, the main. And yes, do them at the cooler temperatures. That way you can feel it's the find. You, you bring a heat out and you have to find your marks, chisel marks, uh, whatever, fuller punch marks. You'll probably lose all your heat before you can find the right spot and, until you get real good at it, you know. But even if you're good at it, it makes a lot of sense to lay out at the cooler temperatures so you can, you know, feel them instead of find them. So I'll put it back in, then I'll... Okay, so cord, so seal. Don't do them all at once. Develop them. And you'll notice it starts to bend the neck. That's why I didn't really bend the neck. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wow out the jaw with a ball. Usually I have a bigger one, but I've made one in here. So I mark it, and then I'll just level this off. And what I'll do is I'll come and I'll go for that mark first, and then I'll finish these off. Uh, you can still go quite some ways. Don't go too thin and make them sharp. 
you know, where you really wow it out. But uh, I can go further. And it, then you'll see this jaw also come out with that mark. So start there with the motor seat and finish up here. Wowed it out a little bit. Now I'll go back in here a little bit further. If you want, you can do a half, half on, half off, and it'll make a mark whether you want to leave that or run it out. It's up to you. It makes them scallop a little bit more when you do that half fuller face blow. But, uh, you know, now I'm gonna take my eye punch. Well, it's not really a punch. It's more of an eye chisel. Uh, it was a square punch that I forged. And then what I did is uh, ground two corners off and drove a ball fuller into it, a squash ball fuller, not a ball, you know, a sphere. And then when I ground it, I ground it off like a chisel. So with two little flat stops in the corners of the eye. So that's why I can, you know, do this at colder temperatures. I sign black tool seal with my eye. Uh, it's a chisel, not a punch. And my nose is also a punch. I mean, a chisel is not a punch. See, it's also a square punch, small square punch. And then I, I, I leave two corners, oops. And then I grind one off, roundish. Then I, I do a little flat mark, and then I take a ch chainsaw file, and, and it's a little crescent moon. I use these for my 3D ones too. I just go further into the material when I use it. But they're chisels, they are not actual punches. I, I think, I don't know, you know, a lot of people are copying these also, and I don't know if they really actually understand that there are actual chisels instead of punches. Or well, they should be, because they, they work a lot better. And yeah, you can do them at the cold temperature. So, that's basically uh, a tool handle. I can make any other, any kind of tool. Too bad I had that little burnt spot, but I can actually work that and repair that somewhat. Uh, by having to work it. Um, if I wanted to go here, I could still come in here and, and move this down. But all that up there is finished. Don't try and finish things right off the bat. You develop things and then, you know, when you're going to be at the end of an area, you can finish it. So you're not putting that continually back in the fire. People wonder why my work is clean. That has a lot to do with it. Doing what you can in the heat, moving on, moving on and finishing, you know, later on. Uh, I don't brush oh, like people think. You know, brushing can be a waste of time, especially when you're starting out. But even when you're experienced, why brush until the end? You know, unless some kind of something hangs on or something, you know, that shouldn't be, you know, some blinker or something, get that off. 